You are listening to the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network. Visit PencilandPaperProductions.Podbean.com to find more great podcasts. Welcome to the Palace of Mega Pixels. This is Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo! Welcome to Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo. I'm your host, Stephen White. With me is my co-host, Lacey Finley. Oh, happy Monday. Happy Labor Day. Oh, if yeah, that's, that's something true, you too. Do. Yeah. yeah. I hear people I mean, get, like, extra time off work for that and all that kind of stuff. Like, it's a fun I am fun one thing. of those people. Nice. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. I get to I'm normally off and... on Monday, so I guess I can't sit here and complain. But, like, you know, we're yeah. s- we would still be open. But it's, it's a holiday. I mean, it you is. would like to have that extra holiday day hey, to enjoy. Hey, driving to work on Friday was amazing. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, like on a Friday especially. Yeah. That's when it dawned on me. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's a holiday weekend. I could have left like 10, 15 minutes later today and had no idea. Right. Usually I got to leave early. <laughs> <laughs> so I sat in the parking lot for a good 25 minutes, you know, playing on my phone. Sure, sure. And I'm I'm loving that the weather's starting to shift a little bit. You know, we're starting to get slightly cooler weather. I'm not going to yeah. say it's perfect, but it's it's nicer, and the entire week is supposed to be nice. So fingers crossed it'll maintain that because I'm tired of the rain. I'm tired oh, of the. Have you heat. still been getting a ton of rain? Well, we had some rain. I'm pretty sure it was last weekend. It was you know just kind of there, and it's like just go away, will you? Go yeah. go somewhere. <laughs> And then finally, it's it's starting to look nice, and you know the mornings are nice and cool. Days aren't Mm -hmm. as hot, so it's it's that nice, right weather, you know, right where you want it, and it'll only last for a little while. But enjoy it while you Mm -hmm. can. I say exactly. So, so, I mean, if you're not outside uh, kicking back and enjoying the weather, what have you been playing? I finished a couple of my FMVs this week, so I finished telling lies. Mm-hmm. Well, pretty much. Let's put it that way. I There's 170 videos apparently you can unlock. Like, you don't need to unlock them all to go ahead and finish the game. Uh, but I have two left to find, man, and it's driving me crazy. Like, I have 168 <laughs> of the 170 videos. And outside of just cheating, I don't, like, I'm too overwhelmed with trying to figure out where I'm even going to find or what keywords I would use to find these last two videos. Like, are they together, these two videos? Is it both sides of a conversation? Is it the other half of, of the one of the 168 other videos that I've already watched and I have no idea which one to watch to try to pull at the thread? You know what I mean? So it's like... I might just have to cheat. And what I mean by that is just like going into the game files and watching all of the videos and seeing if there's one that I hadn't seen and going back into the game and typing what they said and see if that video will pop up for the achievement. Because I'm so close that I almost kind of want to cheat that way because it's like this will be the first time that I've like 100% in a game because I think that's the only achievement I have left is to watch all of the videos and then upload them because the end of the game is you uploading all of your files to whomever again to avoid spoilers but you know and then that's what'll finish the game for you and um i i found out this game is 100 percent the journey you'll probably be like you're not getting some big payoff ending like you thought and I, there is three different endings to get so i did find that out too but they're like mm-hmm. very short and mm-hmm. bizarre and again without doing spoilers but it's just, it's not a huge payoff so it's 100 percent the journey on this game <laughs> But dang it, two videos, two videos. So I might just have to cheat and watch all of them in the the files of the game and just see if I can. But I'd have to watch them all because I don't Mm. even know if I would know from the thumbnail if it's one that I had seen or not. So I would I would have to watch enough of it to go. Oh, yeah, because we found one that had no dialogue. How the hell was I supposed to find that one? It was completely by accident because there was like, I guess, a song playing in the background. Mm hmm. Dirty pool, Sam Barlow, dirty pool, man. Because, like, if you weren't paying attention to that song, 
How would you, you know, would you have known to like type in those words that the song sang? I'm like, oh, you gotta right. be kidding me. So if you're out there going, where the hell is one of these videos? It's probably tucked away in some song that's playing. And I don't know, you could probably just easily look it up right now and someone could just tell you what it is because it's been out <laughs> long enough. But, uh, but yeah, overall, good game. Um, I think I like her story better now that I finished it. Um, but I think I, I enjoyed it in its own right. I appreciate what they tried to do and differ with it. And I also played Erica for PlayStation, mm-hmm. the interactive movie that they released during Gamescom. And meh. Meh. Yeah. Um, guess, yeah. It, it was okay. Um, I, I don't think it was great. Because, like, the story itself was just one of those really weird, bizarre ones that I think is meant for you to have to play it, like, three or four times to do all of the decisions to get the full scope of the story. Um, because it's just weird. Um, and I did two playthroughs. It only took about two hours per playthrough. Which is about was that what I was expecting. Um, it was about two hours. And I don't, I don't know. I just I didn't enjoy it as much as I was hoping that I would. And I think my biggest downfall with it is the mechanics. I, I, okay. I can appreciate that they – it's 100% the touchpad on your PlayStation. 100% the touchpad. So okay. I can appreciate someone trying to take advantage of that feature because nobody really has and all of the time the PlayStation's been out outside of like maybe using it to flip through a book you pick up in a game or something like that, you know, and mm. uh, maybe using it as a menu screen. But there'll be the options that'll come across the screen and you have to like a t- just use the touchpad, move your finger to hover over which option you want, which makes it a little complicated because you've got a really small surface area. Um, and it's kind of a limited time. You can see like the whiteness of the, um, dialogue starting to get fading, you know, to mm-hmm. kind of indicate that there's a time limit that you need to make this decision in. And, um, sometimes I would hit the wrong one just cause I couldn't. And if you start it over like a roller ball, it'll like bring the cursor back to the middle. Um, but they have a companion app that you can download on your phone. So it plays exactly the same way, but I guess now you have a larger surface area on your phone to drag it along. Like it doesn't make it a point and click thing. You're still doing the same thing you would on the touchpad. You just, I guess, however big your phone is, gives you a larger surface area to kind of like scan your finger on. So I just really disliked that mechanic. I just wish they would have let us use the joystick to choose whichever it was. Like I said, I can applaud you trying to use that touchpad. But um, I didn't like it. Didn't like it at all. Um, so meh for me on that one. Yeah, I really okay. wanted to love it. Uh, the the story. It was fine. The story was fine. But it wasn't like gripping. And I, I just felt the need to play it again so I could unlock more, you know. Um, right. Honestly, I still think like as far as interactive movies go, Late Shift still 100% kind of king in my book right now as far as the sure. story goes. And keeping it action packed. And the acting was phenomenal. And, you know, all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so... I mean, it's worth the 10 bucks, I guess, but um, I don't know. I was a little disappointed. So I've got one more FMV that came out a couple days ago to play, and then I'll kind of like judge those three <laughs> together, I guess, you know, since they all kind of came out right on top of each other. Um, so I'm going to be diving into Headspun later on, which is one that uh, just came out a few days ago. So I think they said they had a bug, though, that was causing the, the FMV videos to not play properly. So I'm going to have to look in to see if they got that patched. It was a couple days ago, so I would imagine they would have gotten right on that because that's obviously yeah. the game. You know, like mm-hmm. it's not a full FMV, but it has the FMV element. So like you'll right. be playing the game and I'm sure, you know, as dialogue happens is when the FMV moments happen. So that's um, I think that's it. I think that's all okay. I played this week. So got those two under my belt. One, both of them I finished. And uh, I don't know that I'll do a third playthrough on Erica to see if I can unlock some more stuff, but I might. It's short. May mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. See how it's going. But, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm kind of in a backlog right now, which is fantastic. All summer long, I was whining that I couldn't think of anything I wanted to play. And now all of them came out at the same time. As always. Because I still want to play Control. I want to play Control so bad. I've heard amazing things about it. And I want to play Man of Madon. Um, mm-hmm. And like trying to avoid spoilers for both of those is quite impossible in the circles that I run. So I've been doing pretty good so far. So now it's just saving money and hopefully one of them will go on sale soon. Right. And I can pick up the other one since I've already bought three new games. <laughs> Thank God for indie though, because I don't feel like I broke the bank. You know what I mean? They weren't sure, like full sure. price games or anything. Mm-hmm. But uh, So what have you been playing? Well, let's see. 
I only had two written down, but I'm going to mention a third that I just kind of messed with last night because, you know, I was having internet issues and I was in the midst of resetting it. So I thought, well, let me just play a little something while I'm waiting for that to come back up. Uh, I'm going to have to say, I think I have decided that Sonic the Hedgehog is the, is not a good game. They are not Mm -hmm. good games. I have played, I tried playing Sonic Mania during that downtime and... They're just, they're not good games, okay? They're they are terribly designed for the speed and all this other stuff. In one minute, you're just like, yeah, 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 this is awesome, this is great. And then they put you into these stupid areas where enemies just randomly hit you or you you can't, you lose your speed. I just, I don't, I, I, I cannot for, I, I cannot advocate for the... <laughs> I just, I don't like them. I don't like them. Yeah, I, I don't know if it was like, I, I just have nostalgia in my eyes from when I played yeah. them growing up. And I've just mm-hmm. never revisited. So in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I remember having fun. But I didn't know any better. Yeah, exactly. Because that's all you had. <laughs> but right. looking back on it now, I mean, I know Sonic Mania is like a revamped or like old levels. And then they put in new twists on the levels and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But still, they just, they're not good. I'm sorry. If you love right Sonic, on. I'm good for you, but I Right. It's not Everybody's for me. Everybody's got to like something. Yeah, it's not for me. I I can't sit here and say that they're just fantastic games. I I just can't. So mm-hmm. screw Sonic. Uh outside of that, I did finish uh Detroit Become Human. Nice. I Man, I was I felt like I was doing so good. Uh-oh. And I I didn't I don't feel like I achieved the perfect ending I could have because okay. as far as I'm the sure Rebel- we're allowed to talk about it. It's been yeah, out yeah, for over gonna- a year. So spoilers incoming. And if you haven't played it and you wanted to, it's kind of on you now. Yeah, <laughs> it's so, been a long yeah, It's enough. been out. It's free. <laughs> and it's free. You sh- yeah. You should have, you should have been all, all over it. Um, let's see the, the, you got the three main characters, um, Connor, uh, I'm trying to remember their names. He's oh, the, God. He's yeah, the one I can always so remember. Clara? Clara? Cara? Cara? Cara. Cara. That's Cara. right. Cara. Yeah. And then um, the the main guy, uh, uh, his name's right there. I don't tip my tongue. I know. Marcus. Dude, Marcus. Marcus. Yes, there Marcus. You go. All right. Yeah. So right. with Marcus's revolution, mm-hmm. I felt like I, I, I mean, I achieved you know uh everyone is is in on board with the mm-hmm. you know android revolution everybody you know the public's on my side we had some fallback but i was i was adamant about being peaceful we are right. not going to be you know violent we are always going to show restraint no matter how bad things got i was like no we are going to stand here and we are going to be restrained we're not going to play their game. We're going to stand firm and not attack. And it paid off. So I was like, okay. yes. All right. So it worked. Yeah. Despite a few, you know, hiccups along the way, it worked. So I felt like I got that good. As far as Connor goes, there was that moment where he kind of had this malfunction in his head where he looked like he was about to get roped in, I guess, to kill Marcus or something mm-hmm. like that. Like something in his programming went AWOL. And then I found yeah. my way out, so he's now part of this revolution. He's free. He's, uh, what's the term they use that oh. slipped my mind? Uh, oh, crap. I can't remember. Yeah, I played it when it was new, so now it's like yeah. trying to remember the details. Like, I remember uh, the overarching storylines, but mm-hmm. uh, not, it's, it's like, they were deviants. Deviants? Deviant. Yeah, deviant. Okay. Okay, so he's he's now deviant. He's free. But it was Kara. Trying to get her and the child across the border. So hard, yes. Oh, my God. I made one fatal mistake. And I, I went back and I was like, what did I do wrong? Because I I thought, think there's one choice that you make that is the correct one. Yeah, there was one choice. And I felt like I was doing the right thing. And you have to be a dick. Mm-hmm. And it was, you're at the gates toward the border. And you're trying to get on a bus. And... You run across this couple who has tickets for the bus, and you're trying to find ways to get tickets. You see them arguing, bickering. They walk off. It's like, we got to get on the bus. And they drop their tickets, and you scoop them up. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, they come back looking for them. It's like, what do we do with the tickets? What do we do with the tickets? And I said, 
they had a baby and I was like, I can't take these tickets from them. Right. I think I did the same thing. So I gave them back. But I find out that's the only way to get the good ending for them is you have to screw over this family. And I couldn't do it. I was like, <laughs> isn't right. it so funny? Yeah. Like the game did it to me like that too, where I was like, even though I'm like, it's just a game, it's just a game, it's just a game. But they write the storyline so well that you're like, oh, the choices are so yeah. hard. So I, you know, I, I did the right thing, or at least I felt like I did. And then mm-hmm. Kara dies and I, I'm, I don't know what happened to the girl. You know, I'm hoping she's, she's okay. But it just, I was like, damn it. Come on, man. So yeah. that was, that was my only issue, but I was happy to see, cause at the end it was like right after the credits, they did like one more scene with mm-hmm. Connor and uh, the detective whose name I can't remember played by Clancy Brown. Yeah. And they, they hugged each other and I was like, ah, oh, yeah. Aww. And they that's had, the like, this most moment. difficult relationship, I think. Yeah. And I thought I was screwing it up there for a while. And then I started to understand what I needed to do with this character. I was like, you know, he doesn't want to talk about this. He doesn't want to talk about that. But I can I can temper my way into him and and figure out what I need to say or what I need to do. And there was even a, a moment, I think, where you are trying to track down a deviant in a nightclub. And yeah. this is where I thought I lost him because I, we, were, we were on pretty good terms at the time. And but you kept putting money into the dancer box, right? And he's just yeah, like, yeah, Connor! Yeah. yeah, no, I totally did that. <laughs> you, you, you track down where this one deviant went, and you go into the storeroom, and then, of course, you get attacked, and these two deviants attack you, and they start running, and you're forced with a choice because one, I mean, they've been attacking you this whole time, and then one just, like, darts straight for you, and it's like, shoot, don't shoot, and I just shot that bitch. Boom. And she went down, and he seemed troubled by it and i was like yeah. but you see but then i realized later on it's not really that's not his problem so i was like okay so yeah. once i figured that out i was like all right i'll play to this this understanding now right so at least just, you can go back per chapter and like play yeah. from there it'll save so, your choices up to that point of course mm-hmm. but so yeah. i'm I, I definitely want to i'd like to see the other paths because as when they lay out that big grid of choices mm-hmm. i mean there's so many yeah, and i would love to see lot. how some of the other stories progress especially like if i take the revolution through war that would yeah. be interesting but i know it, it probably was. wouldn't turn out as good as w- the way i did it did you actually did, i mean did you take it through violence or did you I did both temp- ways because like both. i went back to a certain point and did it and the and the violent one is definitely more interesting Mm -hmm. like it causes a lot more of those like really long sequences where the qtes left and right and all this kind of stuff you know and i think you can fail or win that one too Mm -hmm. i want to say they had it uh estimated that depending on like where you killed people or this that or the other that you could have almost 40 different ways that this thing could end up wow from all the different choices uh, that could be made. Now that might mean something gets cut off early and you don't have it in the last several chapters or something, mm-hmm. but uh, there's a lot of different ways that that could end up. And I think I only did like two full playthroughs and right. then did the thing where I went per chapter and tried to just like unlock certain trees and, and go from there. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but I never unlocked everything. Okay. Well, the, the, I yeah. mean, trying, trying to go and, and do what I did, um, I kind of lost my train of thought of where I was. <laughs> you were talking about the violent ending. The violent, then, yeah. I yeah. mean, where I took where I, the, the peaceful route, there was a moment where they kind of attacked the little barricade that we had set up. Yep. And, you know, you're kind of cornered and you have this opportunity to do something. And I just saw the option to sing and I thought, screw it, I'm going to sing. And that did it. <laughs> and I was like, singing. You know what okay. I did there the first time? I think there was an option for him to like, light himself on fire or something but the oh, way wow. that i had read it was like he was going to do something to try to save the rest of it so i was like oh that seems like the right way to go mm-hmm. and i just bawled like a baby because it was not what i thought it was going to be <laughs> at all and i'm like did i just did i just kill him because i thought that he was protecting every, you know and i was just yeah. like okay yeah that's uh that's what we did so oh, well. i think other dudes won on that one because mm-hmm. like your leader was just like screw it you know and i'm like no i thought i was protecting you guys yeah but it was, it was definitely an interesting game i'd highly recommend it if you haven't played it and if you kind of skipped over any spoilers go check it out yes. it's pretty fun yeah. um and then once i finished that 
Todd was gracious uh, gracious enough to let me borrow Days Gone, so oh, I've been kind of playing okay. around with that. Um, I don't want to say I like or dislike it. There are things about it that I feel like, like for one one thing, and this may be like a nitpicky thing, but it's it's odd for a game coming out today to be like this. But they do this cutaway with their cutscenes. You know how most games nowadays they transition a cutscene into gameplay. Mm-hmm. This game fades to black. Cutscene fades to black again. Cutscene and back into gameplay, and it's just. It's a little mm. distracting, you know? Yeah. And it's it's odd for a game that comes out today to do that. Yeah. So that's a little nitpicky thing. The controls, uh, I don't seem to have an issue with. It just takes a, a while getting used to. The bike situation, I know a lot of people complained about, you know, having to fix it and gas it up and stuff like that. It's a nice addition to kind of keep you on your toes to keep it, you know, manageable. Um, so... There's a like and dislike to it. Like, I kind of wish I didn't have to worry about keeping my bike up to snuff. But at the same time, I don't dislike it. It's just kind of like a, okay, I could take it or leave it, you Mm -hmm. know. But I'm not that far deep into the game that I can really give a full analysis of what I feel about it. I haven't ran into any of the large groups that you see uh, in the trailers where they've got, you know, big hordes of freakers or whatever they're calling them. Yeah, I, but I will say I hate wolves because they're assholes and they just jump at you from out of nowhere and sons of bitches. But oh, I mean, I'm I'm in, I haven't decided I want to stop playing it. I do want to play more of it, so it's got my attention. We'll just see how long that lasts. Hopefully, okay. it'll be you know throughout the entire game, and I won't be like, oh god. I'm in. I'm enjoying what I'm I'm playing so far. So well, that's good. We'll yeah. see where we go. But that's all I got. So uh, let's talk about some news. Let's do it. There was a bit of news. Uh, I think there was one bigger story that we'll get to. But first, we're going to talk about uh, something we've spoken about in the past. That we've, I know we've spoken several times about the numerous sexual harassment and gender discrimination allegations against Riot Games. Uh, mm-hmm. We mentioned the walkout the company endured back in May. And that kicked off a number of employees who made allegations. That was actually due to them being forced into arbitration, and they were weren't having it because we're like, you're not listening to us. You're just shutting us up, and we're we're not going to have it. And of course, Riot was just like, no, 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 no. It's like, yeah, but that's what you're doing, asshole. Stop. Now these arbitrations, all these claims, allegations, this led to investigations that have actually been ongoing prior to that walkout. And this eventually led to a class action lawsuit against the company. Well, on August 23rd, Riot settled the lawsuit out of court, although no details as to what they settled specifically were provided. But Riot did release a statement ensuring that all claims were taken very seriously and the company will continue to work on its ability to be transparent. Now, as far as those forced into arbitration that led to this lawsuit, according to a tweet like from a group, I guess, that they're all Mm -hmm. part of, uh, they tweeted that this was a victory for women in video games. So hopefully, hopefully they're right. Yeah. I just, I feel the fact that Riot has to continue to say, we're going to do better, we're going to do better. You should have been doing better already. Okay. I I I guess we'll see, like, what was the settlement, you know? That that's what? details they didn't really say. So. Is that enough to finally go? Oh crap! And unfortunately, that's the way you force people into doing the right thing. But uh, yeah. maybe that'll finally be the straw but that can if, get them to stop being in our news cycle like this. Sure. And and the fact that the group did seem to seem satisfied by it, I, I'm okay. going to take that. Okay, you, yeah. you you said this is a win. They, they're the ones who know. Yeah. yeah. So I'll take your word for it. I hope for the best. I hope this is the last we hear of this. Yes. At least me too. in this regard. If we're going to hear anything more about Riot Games, it needs to be positive. No right. more of this crap. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. Now, in a similar story, uh, indie developer Infinite Fall, known for the critically acclaimed hit Night in the Woods, which I never got to play. And I didn't looking, either. Looking but into I it, to. I was like, yeah, why didn't I play this? Anyway. Yeah. Uh, they severed ties with one of their founders, Alec Holo, Holo, Holoka, 
Holoka. Yeah, that guy. Holoka. He's a dick anyway, so it doesn't matter. Holoka. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. <laughs> uh, apparently, a fellow game developer, Zoe Quinn, shared a number of graphic and detailed tweets alleging sexual assault. So, you know. Oh. Holoka. He's a dick. Oh, anyway, good. outside of cutting ties, the company also scrapped plans for a physical release of the game, Night in the Woods, as well as cancel or at least postpone other upcoming projects they had in motion. Infinite Falls Scott Benson and Bethany Hockenberry tweeted about their decision to kick Holoko holo, 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 dickhead to the curb <laughs> and mention how difficult all of it had been. They also commented about the impact Night in the Woods has had for its audience in hopes that their feelings do not change because of this, but do understand if it does and reaffirm that they would be handling the game going forward. Now, I... I st- Still want to play this game. In fact, researching this, I, I was looking at the game and I was like, ah, oh, yeah, why? This looks like a game I would really be into. I would love to still play it. But mm-hmm. if I knew, if I know for a fact that he's getting a dime, I'm not buying it. Yeah, you know what I mean? that's a tough call. Yeah. So you still want to support the people who were involved sure, in it. Sure. Yeah. If I knew but he was the out- way that those cycles yeah. go, who gets the most at the top. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's my. Because I, I, I do want to play it. I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm really surprised that it went under the radar for me like this because I feel like I'd seen it. Like looking I at totally it. I totally did. Like, oh, yeah. I'm just assuming my backlog was too real at the time or something. And I was just like, I'll get to it. And then mm-hmm. a too much distance passed is what I'm thinking. Right. I think it just fell through the cracks over time. And I just I forgot about it. So we'll see. But yeah, screw that guy. He better disappear. Mm-hmm. I, I don't understand what's wrong with people today i really don't i don't either i just common decency or it's finally all just coming to a head about all this stuff they've been putting up with all this time and and it's, just to, the the fact that in someone's mindset they just think this is all right this is okay look unless you were specifically told hey i want you to do this for me by a woman don't do it don't I yeah. mean, I personally, just as a guy, like in my single days, I would be so careful about the things I would do and say. I mean, they still do today, granted, but if approaching a woman, I was like, do I say this? Do I say that? What do I do? I never once in my mind would I be like, I'm going to send her a dick pic. I bet you that'll turn her That'll around. do it. No. That'll no. get her on board. No. Yeah. That's just, I mean, nowhere in my brain did that register as like, that's a smart move. Mm-hmm. Ever. That's the play, man. Yeah, I don't That's, get it I either. I don't get it either. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. So, uh, hey, we're kind of uh, interrupting our regularly scheduled uh, podcast. As you're already aware, we're kind of in the middle of something here, but we wanted to kind of interject because something happened. Yeah. You know, as we're sitting there here, some breaking news. Talking about. Uh, this guy, Alec Holoka, who was accused of sexually assaulting another game developer, we mm-hmm. got news that he, the the article itself just says he passes away, but I think it's all fair to say that he probably committed suicide. Um, yeah, we're, the, 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 I don't see any details yet with the, uh, the article that we've seen, but yeah. I mean... It it, it it wouldn't surprise me if that's what we end up finding out about right. it. So that's, I mean, I, I we were just ripping him apart. I, I understand that. And people, I feel like we were kind of in the right to a degree at that point mm-hmm. because, you know, yeah, people are, you know, they, there's no excuse for that. And in right. this, in this article, uh, we're, we're seeing, you know, his sister's coming out and she's talking about that he was a victim of abuse, that he had a lifetime of battling personality and mood disorders and all this other stuff. But she also does state she will not pretend that he is not also responsible for causing harm. Right. I, I, I can't I can't stand behind what he did. I can I right. can send my sympathies to his family because I understand that they right. are hurting and that they are in pain and grief over his actions. But I also cannot condone what he did and will not. 
Right. Uh, you know, I and uh, yeah, you can't. I, I hate, or you shouldn't. You know, I hate that this has happened to them. Mm-hmm. But he, you know, I, even even I'm I'm so torn on it because I feel like the the statement is trying to humanize him in a way to help you understand why he may have done what he did, but there's no excuse for it. I'm, I, I'm not going to sit here and make excuses for it or, or try to say, well, he right. was a troubled guy. That's why I did it. Doesn't make it right. Right. So I guess I just wanted, I just wanted to kind of break in, let you know that we did find this out uh, in enough time. That he committed suicide. Yeah, to be able to add it into the reco- uh, the recording. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, who knows? By the time this airs, there w- would be more details surrounding it if if they're releasing that sort of thing to the public. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it broke. Well, for us, yeah, a, mere a few minutes hour ago. ago um, if that. Yeah, and we record in the morning, so. Yeah. So, uh, again, thoughts, well wishes go out to his family, and yes. but I, I'm not going to backtrack on what I said earlier right so and i and i mean i know that there's like a stigma of not you know speaking ill of the dead and and we don't have to um but there's still you know you you can't condone their actions regardless of being alive or not and i still hope that those uh the the victims uh can find some sort of peace and now you're not going to be able to go through the the entire process that you were probably anticipating going through Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I hope there's peace for them and also condolences to the family that they're going through this, this tough time right now with a family member. Right. But with that said, uh, we're going to bring you back to your regularly scheduled podcast. Now, the most surprising news from last week, uh, there was a company known as LCG Entertainment they announced that they had acquired all assets, trademarks, and IP rights owned by Telltale Games, and with them, would be reviving the company. Now, the two main players behind this acquisition seem to be Jamie Otel... God damn, these people's names. (laughs) Otele. Let's just say his name is Otele. That's the word. O-T-T-I-L... Otele. Otele. Jamie Otele. There we go. Oddly, that sounds good. Jamie Oddly and Brian Waddle. See, Waddle. That's easy. Uh, nice. We're going to say it's Waddell. Waddell. <laughs> no. <laughs> Both are investors in LCG with Oddle. Oddle. I'm just going to say Oddle. If I'm saying it or wrong, just say sue Jamie. Me. Now, how's Jamie. That? Yeah, why not? Jamie. Now, I'll stick go. with that. Uh, Jamie has uh, been CEO of GPC Games and president of Abandoned Interactive Entertainment, while Waddle. Uh, he actually works as an entrepreneur using his years of experience in management as well as sales and marketing to help other teams ensure uh, that they can scale their business properly. Mm-hmm. Now, when asked why they were reviving the brand that is Telltale, Jamie told Gaming or Game Daily Biz that they saw that this was a viable business that existed within this you know plethora of games and mm-hmm. IP. And knew under the right conditions, it still could be viable. Considering that many of the company's IPs were licensed, one might wonder what they'd actually have to do to acquire some of this if they don't already have them. Because I can't imagine DC is just going to allow them to have Batman. Or Universal is going to allow them to have Jurassic Park. And and Back to the Future just like, oh yeah, yeah, it's still yours. No, no, no. Those are your franchises. Those are your babies. So... From what reports suggest, they actually do seem to have the rights to Batman and The Wolf Among Us, which are technically under the same banner because Wolf Among Us is a Vertigo title, which is a Warner Brothers DC that still under the same banner. So if they they kind of own those, then that means that Warner Brothers themselves probably has some deal or whatever... Or, or maybe kinda... Telltale had one maybe for more yeah. than one, and so they, they were able to acquire that contract. I don't know exactly right. how it works. But it's but... It, all under the same banner, so it makes sense. You know? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, however, The Walking Dead 
I mean, that's a skybound property. Robert Kirkman's mm-hmm. not going to allow anybody to have that. So that went right back to them, obviously. And they, they were finishing that, though, right? Yeah, they so did like finish. That, yeah. Yeah. So they got that back. They finished the game. So they got... That was understandable. If they, if they still had the rights to that, I would have been surprised. You know yeah. what I mean? Now, they have stated that they are looking to pursue those third-party licenses so this new incarnation can commit to developing new games under the brand and update the company's outdated development tools, tech, and its development model. So, fingers crossed they could do that. Now, while all of that would be great, one thing to note is the term new incarnation, since this is not the old Telltale. Right. These are. This is just a brand new company saying we want to take this brand. Kind of like and, when they bought Atari. Sure. Now, for for good or for ill, this is what they're doing. That said, LCG has stated that their intent is to hire former Telltale staff, albeit on a contract basis at first. Yeah. And Sarah Guinness, who was the director of operations at the old company, has taken on the same role here in the new Telltale in hopes of overseeing an easy transition into this new company, as it were. However, these olive branches have not set well with former employees, with boycotts being called for, while others have actually demanded that the new company pay off the debts of the old company, which I don't really see how that's fair. It's not Uh, their fault. Yeah, that's... I don't know how that works, but as an outsider hearing that, that doesn't seem like that's their cross to bear. Yeah, it's like the sins of I the father. Like they are, yeah, the, I think the original company still needs to figure that one out. Sure, sure. They should yeah. have been paid already for crying out loud. I mean, oh yeah, I agree. <sighs> Back so, when having to do this is stupid, but but I, but I do kind of feel like that that little. Uh, olive branch to say hey we want to hire you back is is their way of trying to make amends for that even right. though they don't have to they, and they yeah. may not have i mean what it, what other i imagine this is a smaller company right yeah, or no? yeah. i mean this is you this know is... Uh, i i understood i think i even heard some they were like you should just be hiring them full time and all this kind of stuff and mm-hmm. again with me not really knowing the inner workings and all that kind of stuff uh, that they, they may not have the funds for that. So maybe they're hoping that they can bring some of them on, turn that into more money and then hopefully maybe hire the original people back on a more permanent basis or however right. permanent developing teams are when it comes to companies like this. I mean, the, mm-hmm. the, the company itself, they only seem to be investors perhaps because yeah, they yeah. have other people involved who are investing in that company as well to help bring this brand back plus they actually mm-hmm. have to acquire a publisher to help them publish the games further oh, okay so there i mean there's a lot more to it than i think that a lot of these people are seeing up front so mm-hmm. there are other factors involved but again i feel like now granted i can understand and granted this this is something that is still kind of within the story that these people who had these jobs if they don't want the job, it's understandable. That's mm-hmm. it's a bad moment in your life where you got screwed over because somebody was incompetent. Right. So I can understand the frustration, but do not take it out on people who are not responsible for the actions of someone else. Yeah. But I, I do get where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. Now, on social media, various claims have been doing the round since the announcement. Uh, like we said, just calling for the... the pay off of the debts and whatnot uh, some have even called for the boycott some have even felt that the new company is simultaneously not a genuine relaunch of telltale while at the same time somehow being responsible for what the other company did uh however some i mean outside of sarah guinness there were a few other former employees who did take the contract deal and Guinness said that they are working to bring more on board. I hope for the best. Yeah, they are I all. Un- too, yeah. I mean, even even some that have spoke out who took the deal said that they are incredibly wary of the situation. And I get it. I get it. Mm-hmm. So I I don't want to look at. And then they might have some big shoes to fill. So hopefully, this yeah. company is ready for that. Um, take care of your people, man. Yeah. Take good care of your people. They're your backbone. They're why you have games. And I mean, uh, hopefully their reputation will build itself from there. 
Yeah, because I, I, I've I really... never heard of this group before this, so I, I'm speaking completely out of just what I'm hearing and what I've read this week. But mm-hmm. I mean, I think what what is is the one thing to take away here that uh, I don't know if re, rever, reviving, I guess, would be the proper. I don't know if reviving Telltale with the stink that it has on it right now is such a smart move. To take all these assets and rebrand it as something new that doesn't have that that mark on it might actually be a better idea. However, like they said, there's a viable brand here that used to make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Where all that money went, who knows? But well, me yeah. personally, <laughs> me personally, if I was in this situation, I don't know if I would take Telltale and put it right back into the forefront saying, hey, it's coming back. I'd be like, hey, no, no, no. We got all this stuff. Or maybe rebrand it a little bit first, maybe. Yeah, I don't, exactly. Yeah. I think that's that might have been the smarter approach to say, we got this stuff from Telltale, but we're not going to come back as Telltale. We're going to come back as right. fill in the blank. And then Telltale tell 2.0. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe just leave that name off of it. I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like that's going to be its downfall, if anything. But maybe not. Maybe not. I want these people to to have a great working environment. I hope mm-hmm. they don't get screwed over again. Fingers crossed for exactly the company. So I we'll hope see. for the best for you guys for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, let's do some quick hits. Excellent, oh boy. What do we got here? All right. So first of all, Mario Kart Tour, the mobile game that I took part in the beta for yes. that I talked about, uh, it's going to officially release on September 25th for mobile devices. So if you're looking forward there you to that. Go. There you go. You got a date. Set your calendar for it. Here's one of those names. I'm gonna I'm gonna nail this. Fumito <laughs> Yudia. Fumito Yudia. Yeah. Sounds right. He's the creator of Ico, Shadow of the Colossus, and The Last Guardian. Uh, he's teasing a new game. Uh-oh. So uh, we don't know, but there's implications that it will be multi-platform, not just a PlayStation 4 exclusive. So interesting. All right. If you've never played those games. Check them out. I highly uh, recommend them. Uh, While we're on the subject of PlayStation, they announced a presence at the Tokyo Game Show in a few weeks, but they're not going to hold a press conference. So I think they're they're really deciding they're just going to do things on their own. Hell with press conferences at these big shows. That's 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 two now, you know. Uh, Capcom revealed information regarding an upcoming title called Project Resistance, with many speculating that it will be the company's next Resident Evil game due to the R and E and yeah. yeah Resistance being red. Uh, a teaser is set to drop on September 9th, with gameplay being seen at the Tokyo Game Show in a few weeks. See, we got okay. something to talk about in a few weeks. Tokyo Game Show. Yeah. I mean, Ooh. Capcom's been doing some good stuff, so I'm I'm interested to see what this is about because it's not mm-hmm. really alluding to being a sequel to anything. So no, it's really not. So it might be a one off. Yeah. So we'll we'll see. Uh, Sega announced or officially announced Yakuza Seven, mm-hmm. and and a huge twi- twist. I can't talk today. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> twist. Stephen talking. Take two. <laughs> and a and huge go. twist. <laughs> it will be a turn-based RPG. Yeah, I saw that. I tried is... to watch the trailer. Well, I I hate what I said. tried. I did. I watched the trailer. Mm. I mean, I don't understand anything they said because, you know, <laughs> us Westerners, it's sure. not going to have an English port for, I, I think, several months or whatever after it's released. Mm-hmm. I, I'll be interested to see it, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I like turn-based games. I've played a crap ton of Dragon Age and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um I'm wondering if this will cut down the amount of, I don't see how, I was thinking like street fights, you know, because sometimes you can't even walk like two two blocks without constantly getting into a fight towards the end of the game. I feel like that yeah. might drag it on more. I don't know. Because yeah. those games are long already. But it's, it's a definitely a But a it twist. looks good, though. Mm-hmm. It looks oh, yeah. good. CD Projekt Red officially announced that it has plans to make more Witcher and Cyberpunk games. Finish I'm, this I'm at one least, first. Yeah, I'm. I'm at least <laughs> interested in a new Witcher game. I'd love to see where yeah. they go with that. So yeah, but I'm like more cyberpunk. Like we haven't played the first one yet. Just yeah, hold on. Get, just just wait. Hang on a second. I think they're just at least letting us know. Hey, we plan for a franchise. But like you said, get oh, yeah. let's yeah. let's make sure get that cyberpunk the first game, in the can first, and then which I'm still excited for too. Sure, sure, sure. 
Uh, man of ben- Medan, Madan, Madan, Chari, sure. whichever. I don't know. Potato, however you want to pronounce yeah. it. Man of Medan. I'm going to say Medan. Man of Medan. Apparently, it hid a teaser trailer in the game for its next oh. installment called Little Hope, which I will come out next that. year. So uh, look forward to that when you get to play it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm waiting. I have to wait. That's one mm-hmm. of mine on a, the, the log where I'm just like, I got to wait. Right. It's not a full priced one again either. So at no. least there's that. But. Mm-hmm. And if you wanted to go see this teaser trailer right now, it's already on YouTube. So. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else? Hmm. I feel like I had something here, but um, it's it it's lacking in something. You know what? I'm just gonna skip it because something happened. I think I think it's connected to this next one, and I just okay. I never got them sorted. I'm you just never copy pasted in the right spot. You're like, yeah. I'm going to say this, but I put it above the, the header. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So Indie Dev Yacht Club Games and Nitro, Natrome, Natrome. God, these names today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they announced Shovel Knight Dig for PlayStation 4. Uh, no word if it's going to be on additional platforms, but there is a good chance it will release on the other platforms. I think that's okay. where they connect the two things that I had separate for some odd reason. Uh, if you didn't know, Gears 5 will have microtransactions. Aww. But, but, the developer says that they promise they are player friendly. So. What does that mean? I don't know. I guess they're just not uh, invasive, perhaps. I don't know. Oh, like shoved in your face every five minutes or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Uh, another surprising announcement last week was Nighthawk Interactive and Digital Eclipse announced the Disney Classic Games Aladdin and the Lion King collection yeah. for all platforms, which will release on October 29th. This collection will feature multiple versions of each game, so like Game Boy, Genesis, Super Nintendo maybe, uh, and the usual... Actually, ups. I think I heard Aladdin, the N64 version, was the only one not included i think i think you mean the super super nintendo super nintendo maybe it was it was one of those where it was that was the only one that wasn't that they thought maybe licensing was a problem or something i don't know well i think more or i mean if if i was to take a guess i've always heard that the genesis version is is the superior version that's the one i played yeah i've always heard that i never played it but i always heard it was the superior one because for some odd reason and I'm sure that there's, I think it was basically there were two developers. Like that one developer did the Genesis version, another developer did the Super Nintendo version. And oh, okay. they made two different games, pretty much. So in the Genesis version, you had a scimitar and you're hacking and slashing and, and platforming and whatnot. And then in, in the Super Nintendo, you throw apples and you don't have a scimitar. I threw apples, I yeah. believe. But but that's all you could do. You didn't. You oh. didn't. So I don't know. I, yeah. I'm gonna assume that has a lot to do with it. Superior version. Keep that one. The hell with the other one. Okay. That's yeah, that's what I would. That. Assume. But anyway, the collection will have the usual upscaled graphics to make it look you know more pristine. Uh, you'll have your visual filters to kind of give it that old TV look. Uh, it'll also have features like customizable controls, a rewind feature, and Blu-ray style extras. So if that was a, a game, I know uh, our our buddy Trey from the Tap Stream. Mm-hmm. He's he's talked. I know you go way way back in our library when he was on. He talked about the Lion King being like a game. Yeah, that he, I actually oh, remember watching him replay it again. Not mm-hmm. not terribly long ago. But now now he can have a revamped version mm-hmm. of that game and and relive those memories once again. Uh, Capcom announced Mega Man. Zero ZX Legacy Collection for all platforms, and it will release on January 21st, 2020. I, uh, as everybody is well aware, I'm a Mega Man fan, but I never played mm-hmm. those games, so I really don't have a connection. Yeah. It was just like, okay. I think they were uh, handheld games, like for oh, DSs yeah, and stuff like that. So I don't, I, I saw it and I was like, ah. And that's all I could say because I just I was not excited, like I should be for the other ones. I got the ones that right. I wanted. So, uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance Three is getting some new free costumes like Spider Man's black suit, which is awesome. 
uh, Hulk's gladiator outfit, which is kind of awesome. And then Captain Marvel's classic Ms. Marvel outfit. And there will be a few more freebies along the way. So if you play that game on the Nintendo Switch, which is an exclusive on that console for some reason. And I'm just like, disappointed <laughs> about it. Yeah, I don't know. You're new worry. Yeah, look forward to that. And Marvel's Spider-Man Game of the Year edition was officially announced. And it is available now. There which means that they're probably not going to release any more suits or anything since they've put out a Game of the Year edition. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, I mean, I feel like it's been out long enough. Like we're yeah. we're good. I mean, I I did go back once they released the uh, the Far From Home suits, be okay. just just to see what they look like in action. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's awesome. And I would probably, I mean, the game is fun enough that I would probably replay it yet again, but not at but any later time, on. So. I'm yeah, sure, sure we're still looking far into the future. Give yourself a chance to forget maybe a little mm-hmm. bit of this and that. It is a fun game. It is a fun game. Here's here's a here's a big announcement. Twitch has signed former YouTube Fortnite streamer Nick E30. Nick E30. Nick E. Nick E. Nick E30. Now I will tell you my first reactions upon hearing this was mm-hmm. I don't know who the hell this is. Oh, I don't. Not even a clue. I have but, no uh, idea. But boy, they are excited that they've got this. C lister. I don't Nicky. know. I just love the name. I kind of do love the name. <laughs> I mean, I will forever only say it that way. Mm-hmm. You should, but you should uh, don't don't say it any other. And way. I'm sure Nicky. that's why it was spelled the way that it is. Yes. Sure. Uh, a but little good. bit of okay. Yeah. So we see that competition starting now. Yeah. So here's a, here's a little bit of sad news. Uh, reportedly. The Terminator in Mortal Kombat 11 is not going to be voiced by Arnold Schwarzenegger. What? Yeah, that's what I said too. How do you like a license's face? And what not is his wh- Arnold? What are you doing right now, Arnold? What are you doing? I don't know. I don't know. Like you can't take I don't know one day out of your life and record a bunch of like, yeah, you know, and I'll or be just, back. All he's got to do is just throw in some lines, you know, just who are you? I yeah, will d- smash you, you lightning freak, or Aww, whatever. Aw, that makes me sad. I yeah. thought there was no way in the world he wouldn't have voiced it, considering I know. it's 100% him. Yeah, that's his face. Wow. All right. But I did, I did uh, I'm sure a lot of people have already figured this out by now, but I'm just going to bring it up anyway. Uh, the design of his character is most definitely the, uh, the new movie version uh-huh. of him. So well, I kind it's of, not young Arnold. No, no, no. But I mean, if you were to look through some of the the movies that had come out recently, uh-huh. I think Genesis was one where it was kind of old Arnold Terminator, okay. and you could have said, "Oh, it's that one." No, I think this one is actually based off the new movie that's yet to come out, Dark Fate. Oh, and that also, would be reasonable. Yeah, okay. And if and if you didn't know, I kind of feel like this spoils the fact that he is a Terminator, because I think there was a lot of speculation in that movie. Okay. That maybe he was just a guy who they based the Terminators off of. But I feel like this leans into the fact that he is, in fact, a Terminator. Do you think he plays dress up in it? I don't know, in the movie. I don't know. And so we're. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get me. I, I just. I think I think this tells that he is a Terminator. That's That's all I'm saying. Okay. That's all I'm saying. We just need you to wear this so we could base the Terminator off your likeness. See? Yeah, and then we please. Just pulled you, from that, you know. Could you do that? I don't know. Make um, excuses. The last thing I've got here is we got a huge update on the Mortal Kombat movie reboot, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to yeah. call it the Mortal Kombat film. The other one's 20 years old by now. No one yeah. remembers. Uh, it's got uh, a handful of cast members. That, oh, well, uh, that's good. You need cast for a yeah, movie. But, I mean, it's it's official cast now. So we oh, have, okay. first of all, we have Jessica McNamee. McNamee? McNamee. It familiar. looks like McNamee. McNamee. I'm going to say that. That sounds familiar. Jessica McNamee. She will be playing Sonya Blade. The only things that I saw of note that she's been in was the film version of Chips. You know, like the... Oh, yeah, no, she, looks, she totally looks familiar. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she was also in The Meg, which I couldn't place her. Uh, like, I've seen the movie twice, and I don't I don't remember I who she was. I have seen it. Uh, Josh Lawson 
who was in Anchorman 2, and he's on the TV show Superstore. Uh, he will be playing Kano. You look like you had a revelation. revelation well, I, I was looking at her IMDb, and she was ah. on Sirens, and that's when I went, oh, I watched that show. That's okay. why she looks familiar to me. Okay. But okay. Anyway, as you yeah. were. Okay. <laughs> now, I loved that show. The next two that I have, I actually got conflicting reports on, which is odd, because the source in which I pulled it, uh, the information from initially had mm-hmm. their characters swapped. But what was interesting is when I was looking at it, I was like, you're going to tell me that guy's playing him and he's playing him? That doesn't, it seems like it should be the other way around. But then I go to IMDb and it is the other way around. So that's how I'm oh. going to present it. Okay. Because Hopefully I feel the, the agent would have submitted it properly to IMDb. Or yeah, because I, I feel like the, the new source that I got it from, they got it wrong. I think IMDb is spot on because again, Looking at the actors that they got and the characters they are respectively playing, like it makes sense the other way. It around. makes yeah, it made more sense. Yeah. I was like, yeah, well, that yeah. So Chin Han, uh, he was in The Dark Knight, Skyscraper, and he was actually the voice of a character Sonny in the game Sleeping Dogs. Uh, I actually remember him best from The Dark Knight. He was the uh, I think he was a Chinese investor with the criminals, and you know he was always on the monitor. You know, trying okay. to keep his distance when they were all getting busted and whatnot. Uh, he mm. will be playing Shang Tsung. Okay. And I thought, okay, cool. The other guy, uh, Hiro, Hiroyuki Sanada, uh, he was in Avengers Endgame. He was in the Wolverine, Westworld, and he had a pretty big character in Lost, the TV show. He will be okay. playing Scorpion. The reason okay. I started saying this should be the other way around, the guy, Hiroyuki Sanada, He's Scorpion. Like, you see the the model that they have in the games now Mm -hmm. of what Scorpion looks like? That's him. This is the guy. So it was like, Shang Tsung, no, no, he's got, that's Scorpion. So it just, my brain was just like, this can't be right. This cannot be right at all. (laughs) And Well, it sounds like at least the people casting thought like you. Yeah, yeah, because (laughs) he is so spot on Scorpion, it's not even funny. Uh, And the last name that we have here is Louis Tan. He was in Deadpool 2. He played Shatterstar in that, which is a very brief bit. Spoiler. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you haven't seen that movie already, God Again, damn it. Yeah, it's, it's been, been long enough. Uh, but I actually know him best from Into the Badlands, which is a TV show that was on AMC. He played a pretty uh, prominent character in that. I've been meaning to watch that, but yes. Yeah, he's a, he's a good actor. Currently, his role is unknown, but he has been cast. So leads to speculation. If I had a guess, based on all the characters we have cast thus far, I would put my money on Kung Lao because I think okay. he would be perfect for that character. I can't think of anybody else that he really would fit considering all the other cast members that have been laid in motion. We've got our Liu Kang. We've got our Sub-Zero. Now we've got all these. That's the only one that we got left. we got a Raiden. So I think he's going to be Kung Lao. I don't know why they just haven't announced it. Maybe it's not been official yet, but mm-hmm. to my knowledge, he has been cast. They just haven't said who. So okay. If it's out by now, comment. By the by, the time of recording, we don't know. Yeah. All right. We got some weird news. Huh. In this week's episode of What Has Twitch Done Now? Oh, man. Now what? Uh, it seems for <laughs> it, it seems for all intents and purposes they thought they were doing the right thing, only to find out that in context, maybe not so much. So, okay. doesn't you, that always so how we feel? It starts with good intentions. Yeah. So you you tell me what you think. Okay. There was a Polish streamer that goes by the name of H Two Guccio. I'm gonna go with that. Uh. For some reason, he was curious about baby powder. Okay. Apparently, while watching infomercials with his viewers, something came up that mentioned baby powder. Now, okay. he is not familiar with what this is. Furthermore, his English is not good. So, okay. he's it's not his first language. So, the translation may not have come through. So, he was just like, what is, the, what, what is baby powder? I don't understand yeah. what that is. So he did a Google search on stream of baby powder and saw the term diaper rash, did not understand what that was. So he searched diaper rash, 
which then brought up a picture of a baby's backside with diaper rash. Now, yeah. upon seeing this, he was like, ah, and then shut it down as quickly as he can. But Twitch did the same and banned him immediately. Immediately, so, you say? Yeah. So, you know, I, this, I, I understand. I understand the mindset. Child pornography, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I get it. But there's a lot of context leading up to that moment that yeah, you're which like, is oh, very easy to look up and see. Yeah, he what did not. Well. He didn't leave it up and start ogling it. It was like, oh, 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 and shut it down as quickly as he could because, like, oh, no, 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 and they banned him for it. Now, like permanently, or no? Is it a they. Or? It has been reported that they lifted his ban. Okay. But the question here is what. Uh, how many times is this going to happen? I it was that fast, to be honest. Yeah. How many times is this going to happen? Where they are not looking in... Uh, some people need to be banned completely. Some people do not need to be banned at all. We mm-hmm. keep letting people on this platform. I could understand, like, maybe a half-day suspension while at review, and then the human's like, okay, you know... Mm-hmm we were in the wrong whatever however it happened algorithm this or something like that you know uh because i i would rather err on the side of safety with something like that right as well Mm -hmm. it's a it's it's inconvenient and it sucks that it happened or whatever but if if they're going to at least for a minute ban someone while they look into it i can agree with that okay but i don't know yeah yeah yeah. So, sucks. yeah, I, again, I get it, but I think there needs to be more humans at the wheel to look at it and be like, hey, hey, hey. I mean, you could have had someone from Twitch in the stream just pop in and be like, hey, uh, don't do that again. Or just kind of, we, yeah. we saw what happened. It's Put fine, up a just, just chatting screen or something while you're Googling yeah. so this doesn't happen. Yeah. Like, just, just be aware. Please don't, if that happens again, we're going to have to take action, but just. Mm-hmm. Don't don't do that again. I mean, it would be that simple. Just a warning. Yeah. But they didn't even give him a warning. It was just like, nope, you're banned. And then oh, we have to boy. think about it. Yeah. So I don't know. Anyway, uh release dates. We've got uh, we've got quite a few. Quite a few. I'm telling you, August and September this year is just Yeah. It was just crazy. Well, <laughs> September boys, it's starting off. Hot well, I mean, E3, we knew it. We were like, damn, everything's August and September, man. Mm-hmm. Like, this is going to be crazy. All right. So starting on September 3rd, we have The Children of Morta for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Catherine, full body for PlayStation 4, which I, uh, I want to play that so bad. I loved I loved Catherine. That was a game yeah. I don't think I got a chance to talk about on the podcast before now because I played it before we started. But, oh, man, it, it's such a great game. I love it. Uh, I've watched some of it. I've not played it myself, but it's it's weird. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> S- Spyro Reignited Trilogy for PC. Phoenix Point for Xbox One and PC. Torchlight 2 for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Root Letter Last Answer for PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Final Fantasy VIII Remastered for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. WRC 8... FIA World Rally Championship for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Blindfold for PlayStation 4. And The Sims 4 Machino Stuff Pack. I don't even know what Machino is. Apparently or... some big wig designer. Oh. Yeah. Well, if you're buying that, <laughs> you're a schmuck. For yeah. PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Then on September 4th. Fifth, we have River City Girls, which I think was delayed because I'm pretty sure that title was on our uh, list last week. I'm almost positive of that because I mentioned it. Possibly. But I'm going to say it was delayed, but it is now coming out September 5th for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Then Spyro Reignited Trilogy for the Nintendo Switch. Finn and the Ancient Mysteries for Nintendo Switch. Space Cows for Nintendo Switch and PC. Boy, if the Switch wasn't on there, it would have been in our uh, Name That Game segment, let me tell you. Right. <laughs> uh, High Performa for Nintendo Switch. And this is another one I think it was also delayed because I'm pretty sure I saw this one as well. Headliner Novi News for Nintendo yeah. Switch. Yeah, we totally talked about that. Yeah. yeah. 
So, two delays right there. They're coming out on the 5th, supposedly. Then on September 6th, the big one, Gears 5, Xbox One. Then another big one, Monster Hunter World, Iceborne for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Uh, we also have Gun Pixies, or Gun Gun Pixies for Nintendo Switch. NBA 2K20 for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Creature in the Well for Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Restless Hero for Xbox One. And Super Jumpy Ball for Nintendo Switch. And our PlayStation Plus games for September are... Batman Arkham Knight and Darksiders 3. Which, uh, I mean, the Arkham Knight game, I liked it. I, I don't I think we have it though already. Yeah, we do, but I mean it was fun. So if you if you no, missed it's a great it, game. if you missed it, I mean there's there's a lot of good stuff there's there. Your opportunity, yep. yeah. I can't really speak to Dark Siders three. I tried playing the first one and I just uh, lost interest pretty quick. I don't know that I ever tried those. Hmm. Uh, the Xbox games with gold for September and slash October, since you know they do things stupid, is uh, Hitman the complete first season will be available from September 1st through the 30th on Xbox One. We Were Here will be available from the September 16th through October 15th on Xbox One. Earth Defense Fourth 2025. I think I said Earth Defense Fourth. You I think did. I went... I was going to let you. I was just going to let Python. it go. With <laughs> Earth Defense Fourth of 2025. Defense. Defense. It's available from September 4th to the 15th on Xbox One and the 360. And then <laughs> Tekken Tag Tournament 2, available September 16th to the 30th on Xbox One and the 360. I'm still impressed that we're still getting like PS3 and 360 games. Yeah, well, I mean, we're not... Uh, Sony's done with the PlayStation 3 games. Those are only PlayStation 4. That's all they're releasing anymore. It's it's Microsoft that won't let the 360 die. Hang on to it, man. Reason. I guess there's enough got. people still playing it. Mm-hmm. It's time to play Name That Game. All right. I've got... Uh, I did narrow it down to three. I had four at one moment, and then I started looking at one, and I really couldn't do much with the description I was given, so I was like, all right, I'll cut it to three. It's fine. Because it was an odd little game, and I thought, oh, man, this would be a good one, but they didn't give me a lot to work with. So. Maybe we'll just have, like, an honorable mentions or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just, it was, well, I'll go ahead and tell you what it was. It was like a, it was an Olympics game where you do have, like, little mini games doing Olympic events, but mm-hmm. you're babies. Oh. Okay. And your okay. baby's from around the world playing Olympics. And I'll give you a, what do you think the, the title was? A baby, a baby Olympics from around the world. Oh, God. It, it, was it something as generic as like baby Olympic? No, it was, it was just, you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have guessed. I, I guarantee you. But I mean, baby oh. was in the title. So baby you're, sports, you're, baby sports ball. Come baby on, heat. baby. Come, <laughs> Come on, on baby. baby. Yep, that's it. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. So it's just, I didn't, I, I couldn't work with that. So I was like, ah, screw it. Never mind. Yeah. All right. This game is a 2D action platformer, which gives you the power to draw ladders, bridges, and trampolines to overcome challenges and save the day. You play as a little doodle guy who lives inside a sketchbook. One day, he finds a magic pencil, which allows him to draw anything he can imagine. But his sister gets jealous of him and tries to take the pencil. What a brat! Instead, she ends up with the magic eraser. She discovers she can erase holes in the world and use them to get around faster. Upon discovering that this really upsets her big brother, she starts erasing more bits of the world. What a brat. (laughs) Now, equipped with the magic pencil, you must stop her from erasing the world. Oh, no. Okay. Is this... Quick draw. Final answer. (laughs) 
Luckily, you didn't guess any of my choices, so good. Uh, <laughs> is this A, Marvin's Magic Pencil, B, Pat Paulson's Picture World, C, Super Sketch Bob, or D, Liz the Eraser Bitch? Ah... Uh... I mean, if it's going on Steam, D could be possible. Um, I'm kind of between A and C. What was C? Super Murder's Sketch book? Bob. Super Sketch Bob. I'm going to go with A. Probably should have said C. It is C. Super Sketch Damn it! Bob. <laughs> I should have just gone with it. Yeah, Marvin's Magic Pencil has more of a, a kick to it. Well, they said magic pencil, so here in my or something to that effect. So I'm like, well, yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. All right, Uh, this game is a team-based local multiplayer game for two to four players. Each player takes control of a rat on a kitchen floor, with the goal of feeding a ball of cheese to their team's giant baby rat to score a point. Unique dashing and grabbing mechanics means that teams can work together will have the most success feeding their baby. Not only can players grab the cheese and throw it towards their baby, but they can pick up anything and throw it around. Other players, their baby, even the other team's baby. Special items periodically spawn in the kitchen that players can pick up and use to shake up the match. First team to reach the score limit wins. Is this A, Dunk Rats, B, Kitchen Tails, C, Feta Football, or D, Baby Bree Hoops? Baby Bree Hoops? I don't know. uh, What was B? uh, Kitchen uh, Tails. I like that one. I'm going to go with B. Answer is A, Dunk Rats. Damn. Damn. It's okay. I was waiting for something about like just throwing the stuff, and I'm like, it never came. So I was like, well, all like, right. Yeet a rat. Mm hmm. Yeet a rat. And <laughs> <laughs> jot that one down. All right. <laughs> In this game, you are meant to defend your home dungeon against a bunch of impolite humans. This humorous tower-slash-lane defense game allows you to summon monsters and change tactics on the fly while entertaining you with funny dialogue while you attempt to defeat waves and waves of the most generic heroes mankind has ever seen, presented in glorious, squishy-squashy pixel art style. Squishy-squashy, you say? Mm-hmm. Squishy, okay. squashy. Not my terms, theirs. Is this A, superpower creature tower, B, mostly intense monster defense, C, universal course jerk force, or D, typical extreme dungeon team? I have no idea. These are all ridiculous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, they all kind of sound the same exact thing. So this this will just be a, a random, uh, I, what haven't I chosen today? D. I'll go with D. Answer is B, mostly intense monster defense. Yeah, they, they all, like, to me, sounded the same. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. Yeah, they're back all, to uh, my zero. Zero. Well, you did, you did all right. I mean, you tried. That's I should have had right. one. That's okay. I always second guess myself. So what are we talking about today? What are we talking about today? Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to I'm going to tell you a little story. And uh, then uh, okay. I want you to see what you think about the ethics behind this story. Okay? Because mm-hmm. as the years pass and I get much older, I tend to reflect on things that I don't see anymore. At least things that I remember that I don't see. Now, through the years, I remember taking note of numerous game developers and publishers always being aware of which ones had awesome games and which one had terrible games. Like LGN had this track record of being just terrible, terrible, terrible games. Despite you wanting to play X-Men, Spider-Man, Wolverine, these were all terrible, terrible games. Mm -hmm. Horrible. 
One company that had a fair track record of games released was Ultra Games. Do you remember Ultra Games? Is that, does that ring a bell at all? Kind of. I was always bad with remembering who did what. I remember games specifically. Mm-hmm. Well, you'll probably, you'll no doubt remember the games. Because okay. I remember seeing this logo fairly often as a kid, as Ultra was responsible for releasing titles such as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1 and 2, okay. Skate or Die, and even okay. the original Metal Gear. Now, if that last title caught your attention, it was meant to. Because as I paid very close attention to all of these things, and you might actually remember that Metal Gear is a Konami title, mm-hmm. I also paid attention to the quality of these games. The signs were all there, and deep down I knew that these games were very familiar and reminiscent of other games. Because Ultra Games was just Konami of America in disguise. Releasing titles under a different name. Interesting. Now, why would Konami of America use a different name? You know, they were already publishing games for Nintendo. So, why the ruse? Yeah. Well, if you remember previous stories we've discussed in the past, we've mentioned that Nintendo of America's history, they had very strict licensing rules. You know, they there are no religious content and none of this and none of that there were no violence no swear words nothing so they were very strict around the 80s and 90s one such rule that they had in place was that all third party companies were only allowed to publish up to five games per year and this rule was set in place as a matter of quality control so we weren't just seeing shovelware you know just game publishers and developers just Put another game out, put another game out, put another game out. So they were just trying to kind of keep it in check, unlike what we see today on Steam. Oh, yeah. Now, Konami was a little troubled by this restriction since they were publishing at least 10 titles a year in Japan. So to overcome this, Konami of America created a subsidiary known as Ultra Software Corporation, which was a shell corporation that would act as a publishing label. Okay. Now keep in mind that these restrictions were only localized within the United States, as Nintendo of Japan had no qualms about the amount of games published, and they didn't have the strict regulations that Nintendo of America had as well, like with the religious imagery and swearing and violence and so on and so forth. Now at first, Ultra was primarily focused on localizing certain titles from Konami's Japanese library of games. In fact, Ultra actually had a European equivalent in Palcom Software Limited created by Konami for the same purpose and just for European, you know, EU status. Eventually, the company actually began publishing games for other companies as well, like Rare and Beam Software. And they even published versions of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Metal Gear for the IBM PC and the Commodore 64. Most of these titles published under the label were forgettable, I would say, save for the few that I've I've already mentioned. Uh, In fact, looking over the list of 33 different titles that they published under Ultra's label, only two additional items stood out for me personally, and that was Base Wars for the NES and Sunset Riders for the Super NES, which happened to be one of the last games published under that label. Base Wars was actually a baseball game, but you were uh, robots. So when you went to, like, you'd hit the ball, and then say they were coming to throwing a ball to first base, and you're running there, and you think you're going to be out, right? No, no, you get to fight. (laughs) Fight for your right to be on that base. That's eh? right. So you could sit there and fight somebody and, and win the base if you wanted to. So it was, it was a unique baseball game. Yeah. I wasn't a big baseball fan, but, I mean, you're allowing me to fight in a baseball game? Sure, I'll do that. Sure, yeah. But, so what happened to Ultra Games? Pretty much, it just outlived its purpose. After the launch of the Super NES, Nintendo of America... Nintendo of America, that's, that's the term... My words today, I swear <laughs> to God. Nintendo of America... No more caffeine. They began to loosen up on some of their more restrictive rules. So in 1992, Konami dissolved the label and Ultra Games would be forgotten in time. But I also find this story very telling 
about Konami as a whole. Because it seems the company has never really had a decent bone in his body. Here, they were put up against a wall, expected to follow guidelines, and what did they do? They created a workaround. All for the purpose of the almighty dollar. So, I mean, do you agree? Do you think that they were in the right? Or do you think that was a shady... (sighs) (laughs) That's kind of tough. I don't know if... Well, I mean, if they were considered quality games, I mean, it almost seems like you can't fault them for just, like, having too many really great games to be putting out at the same time. Mm-hmm. But uh, do, It's, like, do, such a tough comparison to, like, what we know about what they did recently, you know? Like, but do keep in mind, people. but do keep in mind, like I said, they went from just converting Konami titles to the states to actually publishing other titles for other people. So it wasn't just Konami's titles anymore. They eventually started taking on other people's work and putting them out as well. Putting more games into the churning bowl, into the fire. I don't know. It just felt like they were double dipping. Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, definitely greed behind a lot of this stuff here, you know, Mm -hmm. for sure. Oh, man. Yeah. (sighs) That's a tough one. Okay. That's a tough question because, like, I, I, I really don't know. I think it almost like when you when you put it like that it sounds like smart business. It does. Back in a day when there wasn't as many competing companies for the same, like, like we have today. Like, mm-hmm. there's a million and two places you can point to for a video game. Uh, I don't know that I would call it that bad. Okay. I don't, I'm you just, know? Yeah, I mean, the, there's the, the the ethics behind it. It's definitely what I want to explore here, and I would open up the question to everybody listening: What do you think? You know, add us on. I guess I'm able to put myself in that time frame too. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you were doing that today, I think that would be a, a different story, right? I, whether it's right or wrong, I mean, that's that's in the eye of the beholder, right? I mean, obviously, but... obviously, we we've, we've seen other companies try to pull fast ones over on Nintendo's because of their strict regulations. We mentioned Tengen. We talked about them, you know, many episodes I feel like back. wouldn't have Nintendo known, like, that it's the same people. They should have, yeah. I mean, I don't think, I think, but again, based on the bylines of the regulations, I don't think they were allowed to pursue any legal action because they technically were not doing anything illegal. Because it right, wasn't Konami. Because it was a loophole they didn't fill. Exactly. They were just like, no, we're gonna we're gonna create this over here. So now it's technically not Konami. We are Ultra. We are owned by Konami, but it's not Konami. So we're not publishing right. Konami games, even though you are. I mean, it's definitely shady. Yeah. A way to like work around, but like, ah, uh, yeah, I don't okay. know. I think, like I said, with, when you're competing in that space, it's got less competition 20 years ago, 30 yeah. years ago now. I just, I found it uh, a very interesting tale when you look at it, you know. So that's why I wanted to bring it up. That's why I thought it would be a fun little, uh, if you didn't know who Ultra Games was, now you know. And if you've ever seen that label, now I mean, you I'm know. sure I did. Like, that's just been, I, I mean, I still have that trouble today sometimes remembering who did what. Yeah, it's you 30 know, like years I'll ago. I remember the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, I may not remember the developer. 30 years ago. So it's it's understandable if you don't remember. Yeah, like as a kid, like probably not paying attention to that splash screen telling me who made this game, you know. Mm-hmm. But that's all I got. That's our show. Are you done? Okay. Are you good? Yeah, I okay. was just stretching. It felt really good. Uh, yeah. I mean, my brain and my mouth aren't really cooperating, so I think I'm I'm done too. You know, <laughs> I've, I've just we've we've not had struggle a, busting a little bit. We have. I don't know, but I'm gonna leave it all in so everybody can enjoy my my musings of yeah. Of just have a drink stuttering. maybe before this one. <laughs> I mean, I had I had coffee, you know. No, I meant as the listener. Like, oh yeah, really yeah, yeah. Enjoy it, you know. Give yeah, you just, the giggles. Yeah, for sure. Well, anyway, uh, you can hit us up on uh, sometime on Twitter. At Super Mega Crash, let us know what your thoughts, ethics. That's a is, a is a very good question. I'd love to hear what people think of this. Do you think it's a smart workaround? Do you think it's unethical? What do you think? Yeah, tell Ask us. Super Mega you know, Crash, let us know. 
are you able to put yourself 30 years ago and like think of it in a different way mm-hmm. or does it not matter? Yeah. You know? I'd love to I'd love to hear from people about that. See what you think. Uh, you can also send us an email at Super Mega Crash if you prefer. You can find us on Instagram to view our weekly icon art. And this one is especially awesome because of all the ultra games all mm-hmm. over the, the, the screen there. Uh, you can support the show by pressing the like button, leaving reviews on your preferred platform, even going to patreon.com slash pencil and paper productions. Tell your friends to find us on the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network found on Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and even youtube.com slash pencil paper productions. Thank you so much for listening. I am Stephen White. I'm Lacia Finley. Join us again next time, Super Mega Crash siblings. But until then, game on. This has been a Pencil and Paper Podcast Network production.